Rosser Reeved in many ways revolutionized television advertising, and he would also use the same techniques to revolutionize American politics through advertising. Enter the 1952 presidential campaign, Dwight Eisenhower versus Adlai Stevenson. Both candidates planned to use TV, but what was expected in those days and what was seen as most dignified was for the candidate to buy 30 minute blocks of TV time to give a televised talk to people. To Rosser Reeves, that made no sense. It would only air late in the evening, garner maybe 5% of the broadcast audience and would probably bore people. So Reeves went to Eisenhower and recommended an alternative. Instead of buying those 30 minutes, use short 20 second to one minute spots and air them before and after programs between sitcoms and Westerns and variety shows. Lucy, Lucille Ball had 67% of the households air it between that and Arthur Godfrey, which had 55% of the households. A lot of those shows were sponsored by one sort of advertiser. So there weren't ads in the middle. So what he did is seize that moment in between these shows uh, to air his ads. And what he told Eisenhower, air those ads and you'll get the most people watching television. That was very smart because what he basically did was say, let some other people build the audience through their shows and you take advantage of those little segments of time in between the shows at far less cost. Eisenhower balked at first. He didn't want to do this, but Reeves knew how to persuade. And with that, the political ad was born. Here was the genius of Rasa Reeves. Saturate the airwaves in pivotal states where swing, a swing from Democratic to Republican could decide the Electoral College vote. Focus at that time on urban areas where the vote was most concentrated and where a disproportionate number of homes had TVs. In other words, target your ads to where they will be most effective. And honestly, that's what we still do today. And by putting Eisenhower between these beloved shows, he became part of the star-studded roster people would see. So Mondays, they would see Arthur Godfrey, then Eisenhower, then Lucille Ball, then Eisenhower. On Wednesdays, they would see Douglas Edwards, then Eisenhower, then Perry Como, and Eisenhower, and so on. To Reeves, the candidate became a visitor in our living rooms, much like Lucille Ball and Arthur Godfrey, a small screen celebrity as much as a political star. And to him, in contrast to all of the critics and to what Adlai Stevenson was saying, reaching this many people wasn't undermining democracy. It was, as he saw it, the essence of democracy. Now, initially, CBS and NBC, the main stations at that time, they balked. They thought this was beneath the dignity of a possible president. But like Eisenhower, they relented, and there was no turning back. So I have two ads here on this screen. Um, the first one, Eisenhower Answers America. This is a classic legendary ad, and this is what Rosser Reeves did. He sat Eisenhower in a studio. He made him up to make him look good because the sort of big TV lights sort of magnify your beard, so you need to put makeup on so that you don't look like you have a five o'clock shadow. He put there out giant cue cards so he could basically uh, show Eisenhower reading these answers but people would know that he was reading these answers. He put these giant cue cards so that Eisenhower could read them without his glasses on because glasses wouldn't have made him look so good. And he filmed 40 spots in one day with Eisenhower sitting there reading from these giant cue cards. Then he recruited tourists, tourists at Radio City Music Hall to ask questions on film, which then Rasa Reeves would then edit in before Eisenhower's answers to make it appear like Eisenhower was indeed answering America. And Eisenhower Answers America was repeated, repeated, repeated because this aired so many times. Eisenhower said to think that an old soldier should come to this, but he did it anyway because Rasa Ruiz was very convincing. Here's an example. Eisenhower Answers America. General, how would you clean up the mess in Washington? My answer? It's not a one agency mess or even a one department mess. It's a top to bottom mess. And I promise we will clean it up from top to bottom. And there you have it. That was the type of ad that he did repeated over and over, Eisenhower Answers America. And there's another ad right here, the man from Abilene. And again, this is a brilliant ad because keep this in mind, Rosser Reeves accomplished a number of things with this ad. He turned Eisenhower into the heroic, larger than life uh, hero, a war hero, uh, and, and ultimately a celebrity. 
But he also, as you'll see, communicated that Eisenhower was really one of us, that he was no different, that he wasn't pretentious, that he wasn't slick, that he was really grounded in the heartland of America. And he used the techniques of repetition, the man from Abilene, the man from Abilene, and as you will hear, that voice of God to make it memorable and authoritative. Here it is. The man from Abilene, out of the heartland of America, out of this small frame house in Abilene, Kansas, came a man, Dwight D. Eisenhower. Through the crucial hour of historic D-Day, he brought us to the triumphant peace of VE Day. Now, another crucial hour in our history. Now, perhaps there's no greater example of Rosserie's influence than this legendary ad developed by Roy Disney, Walt Disney's brother, at the Disney Studios for Dwight Eisenhower. I'm going to play it for you. It's going to get in your heads when I play it for my students more than a couple of times. They come back to class and they say, why did you do that to us? I can't get it out of my heads. Here it is. I for president, I for president, I for president, I for president. You like Ike, I like Ike, everybody likes Ike. For president, hang out the banner, beat the drum. We'll take Ike to Washington. We don't want John or Dean or Harry. Let's do that big job right. Just get in step with the guy that's hep. Get in step with I. You like Ike, I like Ike, everybody likes Ike. For president, hang out the banner, beat the drum. We'll take Ike to Washington. We got to get where we are going. Travel day and night for president. Let Adelaide go the other way. We'll all go with I. President. You like I, I like I. Everybody likes I. For president. Hang out the banner, beat the drum. We'll take I to Washington. We'll take I to Washington. Now is the time for all good Americans to come to the aid of their country. Ike for president, Ike for president, Ike for president. Ike for president, Ike for president, Ike for president. You like Ike, I like Ike, everybody likes Ike. You can't get it out of your heads. This was Rosser Reeves at his best. Now, Eisenhower didn't win the presidency because of TV spots alone. He likely would have defeated Adlai Stevenson anyway. But by using ads and teaming up with Rosser Reeves, they fashioned a new way of campaigning that would change American politics for good. And there's a secondary effect from Eisenhower's campaign that would transform elections as well. Eisenhower spent a princely sum on TV ads, over a million dollars, which was a lot of money back then, over 12 times the amount of the paltry $80,000 that Stevenson grudgingly spent after seeing Eisenhower's campaign. Look, Stevenson didn't even own a TV set back then. He didn't want to do it. Eisenhower did it, all of a sudden, money becomes a bigger factor in electoral politics. So what does that mean? All of a sudden, there's a new emphasis on money, on fundraising, on wealthy donors. You had to raise the money to run the ads. So Rosser Reeves and Eisenhower initiated a fundamental shift in American politics, from smoke-filled rooms to studio control rooms, from political parties to media campaigns, from a system driven by urban machines, union organizing, and party bosses, to one dominated by expensive political consultants and advertisers whose sole purpose is to get in our heads and shape the way we view the candidates and shape the way we vote. 